perfect. That ain't, that ain't no mercy. Ready Player One stars Ty Sheridan as Wade Watts and tells a story about this kid who lost his family and lives alone and the only place where he can have enjoyment is the oasis, a virtual reality world where anyone could be anything and humanity is can't push forward enough, there are no new discoveries, there is nothing. Everybody just builds cars on top of each other. That's how far they have been able to go. So when the, the inventor of the Oasis, Mr. Holiday, once dies, a video message is sent to the world and he tells everyone that he has hidden an egg in the game. And whoever finds the egg will have complete control of the Oasis and, what do you guess, a ton of money. So, uh, everybody's after the egg. Everybody just wants it. And complete war just broke out. They're killing each other. They're kicking each other out of the game. They're real life. In the real life, there are people kind of destroying each other's homes. It is going haywire. And when the government wants to take the egg for themselves, the people is like, fuck that. We're taking it. And boom, just a bunch of nostalgia feels just happening all around. It's, this movie is just nostalgia orgy. It's just, you have Jurassic Park at one point. You have fucking Overwatch. You got King Kong. It's like Spielberg is ejaculating everything pop culture from the 70s, 80s, and 90s and now. And just... Da, ex, an explosion of eighty to nineties pop culture just burst into your face. That will be the last comparison to. No, for, just forget about. It. How is the movie itself? Well, is this the best Spielberg film? No, it's not, in my opinion, but. I, that still doesn't mean I think it's a great film. I had a ton of fun with Ready Player One. I think it is extremely entertaining, extremely funny. The characters are entertaining. The action is fantastic. And the story is sometimes heartwarming and it feels like something Steven Spielberg would direct from the 90s or 80s. And I adored every single moment of this film. Sometimes the CGI could be a little bit heavy, and the villain isn't as as memorable as I may think. He's entertaining to watch. Mad Mickelson, well, not Mad Mickelson, Ben Hamson. I I always butcher the name, but even though he gives an extremely charismatic and great performance, this character I was never able to latch onto as well as the main characters who are a ton of fun. Wade Watts is great. I love the character of Wade Watts. He, uh, you understand his past, you understand why he loves going to the Oasis so much and how much it means to him. So having him to, so he really loves his place. He thinks that's home. And to have him fight for it, his character is great. And probably one of the most memorable main characters from a Spielberg film I'll probably ever see. Ever since Jurassic Park or Indiana Jones or Jaws, I have not been able to latch on to a character like this in such a long time. And Spielberg's direction here and filmmaking, oh, it's something to behold. I love it. His extreme it's this movie is Spielberg written all over it from the filmmaking from the characters from the writing even it is it all speaks Spielberg not not him trying to create a drama like The Post or Bridge of Spies even though they're great films in my opinion they do not exactly speak enough Spielberg for me here it speaks Spielberg and I love it. 
it is so much fun. This movie is just, oh my god. Sure, there are some special effects that are a little bit wonky, but overall, I think it's all well incorporated. And you do feel like you're in a virtual reality world. And that's what I love a lot about this movie. It puts you in this world and makes you immerse into it. And it has this pacing that really does never stop in the relationship between, uh, um, what's her, I always forget names, I'm sorry guys, I always forget names, but the relationship between Samantha Cook and Wade Watts, I think was well done, and I do not think it's too cheesy. Even though it sometimes goes a little bit overboard, I love the character of Samantha Cook also. I will not spoil anything about her, but there's some stuff that I think that if people read the book, they're going to be happy about. And overall, this movie, you know, I hate it when people will try to compare books to the movies because movies are not always going to be as good as the book. The books. Because in books, you get a lot to... The author gets to tell his story in such a huge way. He could put as much character development as he can and as much things as he wants to and needs to. And for a movie, you have to put everything in a two and a half hour runtime or one and a half hour. And you can't get everything you want in it. Whereas in a book, everything is probably more fleshed out. So. So, I do not think it is better than the book in that way, but as a film, I think it still works as well. Is it Spielberg's best movie ever? No. But it has a ton of nostalgia vibes that might turn off and turn on some people. I mean, you have Jurassic Park, you have Hardy Quinn, you have Back to the Future, you have Overwatch, you have Chucky. Whatever you name, whatever you say, it's in this movie. Oh, I think a lot of people are going to have a lot of fun with this movie. Some people might get turned off from the pop culture references. But to me, it's not big of a problem because it is really about pop culture references. And I think a lot of people will enjoy the movie for what it is. I'm going to give Ready Player One an A-. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you guys next time.